Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a really nice equation. Trigonometric, exponential, complex, imaginary, you name it. Okay, so we have cosine of z equals e to the power 1 minus i plus e to the power negative 1 plus i divided by 2 and we're going to be solving for z. Great, so we're going to be using a couple different approaches here and at the end or towards the end we're going to look at the results from Wolfram Alpha and see if Wolfram Alpha can handle something like this. Okay, great, so whenever you have cosine with z, which is a complex number, you should remember Euler's formulas. So let's go ahead and go through them and I also went over these in lecture videos. If you want to learn more about these, go ahead and check out those lecture videos. Great, so let's go ahead and take a look. Cosine of something, right? That's what we are trying to get at. So if you have anything like cosine of theta plus i sine theta, as you know, thanks to Euler, this can be written in exponential form as e to the power i theta. Now what happens if I replace theta with negative theta? Cosine is an even function, so cosine of negative theta will be the same as cosine theta. Let's go ahead and write it down first, and there's going to be a minus sign here. And then cosine of negative theta is just going to be cosine of theta because cosine is even. And sine is an odd function. Therefore, this is just going to be the opposite of or minus minus sine theta. Okay? And on the right-hand side, we're going to have these two exponents. So let's go ahead and copy the first equation because I, I'll need these two together. And then we'll do... The thing. The thing is adding these two equations, of course, right? Because when you add these two equations, I sine theta is going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with 2 cosine theta equals, and allow me to write the first one, the positive one first. Doesn't matter, no big deal. You can do either way, and all of that sum is going to be divided by 2. Okay? So this is the formula. Uh oh, I forgot to erase the 2 there uh, because I already divided by 2. Okay, so that was quick. Now, this is cosine theta, and similarly, you can find sine theta. You just have to subtract and divide by 2i, because cosine theta is going to cancel out. Great, so we have a formula for cosine of theta, and this is helpful because if you look at the given, it's kind of similar to that, isn't it? Okay, great. So now what we can do is replace theta with z, right? So we're going to replace theta with z. So cosine z is just going to be e to the iz plus e to the negative iz divided by 2, and we're going to set this equal to the given expression on the right-hand side, e to the power 1 minus i. Sorry about that. I I was... <laughs> okay. Uh, I know some of you wrote in the comments that I scroll up and down too fast, so I'm going to make sure you get to see what it is. We have e to the power 1 minus i plus e to the power negative 1 plus i all over 2 on the right-hand side. Okay? I'm going to just copy that right here. Let's go ahead and do it. What was that? e to the power 1 minus i plus e to the power negative 1 plus i all over 2. Awesome. So our goal from here, and we can now forget about cosine z, to solve for z. And notice that they are kind of very similar, right? e to the power something plus e to the power something else. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and get rid of the twos first. And now we're going to have a simpler equation. And I know at this point what you're thinking. Oh, we already got the answer. Why keep going forward, right? Okay, here's the thing. How many solutions do you see, right? That's the million dollar question. Let's find out. So now we also need to compare our answers to Wolfram Alpha. So that's important to go through this. Now on the right hand side, we have a constant. If you want, you can call that K. Let's call that K for now. And you can write this as E to the IZ plus 1 over E to the IZ equals k. k is a constant. Remember, we'll get back to it. And e to the iz, we can call something. How about calling it, I don't know, u. u is probably appropriate. Then this gives us u plus 1 over u equals k. Remember, k is a constant. u is a variable. So now we're going to multiply everything by u. u squared plus 1 equals ku. And then u squared minus ku plus 1 equals 0. This is our quadratic, and we can solve it 
using the quadratic formula. If you don't uh, think this is quadratic, you can go ahead and check it out. This is actually quadratic in U, okay? Great, now how do we proceed with the solution using the quadratic formula? U equals negative B, B is negative K, plus minus the square root of B squared minus four, all of that is divided by two. Obviously this gives us two solutions, right? Okay, what is U though? U is e to the power i z. So what we need to do is set this equal to e to the i z and then solve for z from there, right? Okay, great. Let's do it. e to the i z equals k plus minus this so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and replace k with what it is now. e to the i z is equal to u. And now what is k? k is e to the power 1 minus i plus e to the power negative 1 plus i. There is no 2. Remember, we canceled those out. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that, replace k with that. Let me write the k here first. So k is e to the power 1 minus i plus e to the power, actually there is no 2, so I don't need to write it like that, e to the power 1 minus i plus e to the power negative 1 plus i. That's k, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and replace this k with that here. So e to the power 1 minus i plus e to the power negative 1 plus, I don't know why I put 2i there, it's supposed to be negative 1 plus i. Oh, by the way, one thing that is actually going to be helpful, I think, in this case is writing this k a little differently. How? k is equal to the following. Let's go ahead and take a look. k is e to the power 1 plus, one, what was that? e to the power 1 uh, minus i plus e to the power negative 1 plus i divided by, there's no divided by, right? Okay, I keep forgetting. Now, let's go ahead and write this a little differently. Uh, we can actually write this as e to the power 1 or e over e to the i, and we can write this as e to the i over e. So here's one thing we can do. Again, that's going to be a lot of substitution. But let's go ahead and replace one of these with something else. How about, since this is a constant, I can go ahead and call this C. And this will be 1 over C because they're reciprocals, right? So we kind of have an equation like this. U equals, U equals K plus minus this. And K will be replaced with C plus 1 over C. Make sense? Okay, so that is k, and now I'm going to replace it with c plus 1 over c from here. Notice that this is what I call c, and then that's 1 over c. And this is my u. Make sense? Okay, c plus 1 over c plus minus, under the radical we have k squared minus 4, so that's c plus 1 over c squared minus 4, and all of that is divided by 2 because of the quadratic formula. Let's see if we can simplify this. It's going to be a little bit, um, you know, cumbersome, but we can do it. Now, if you square c plus 1 over c, you get c squared plus 1 over c squared plus 2. And if you subtract 4 from it, you get c squared plus 1 over c squared minus 2, which is actually c minus 1 over c squared. Yes, our discriminant is actually a perfect square, and that's perfect. So we can write it now as c plus 1 over c plus minus the square root of delta, which is c minus 1 over c, and let's put that in parentheses, and all of that is divided by 2. Now u becomes, there are two solutions, the first one u sub 1, c plus 1 over c, plus c minus 1 over c, divided by 2. 1 over c cancels out, we end up with u1 equals c. And u sub 2 is c plus 1 over c, minus c plus 1 over c, divided by 2. Now the c's cancel out, 2 over c divided by 2 is going to be 1 over c. But what is c? What is 1 over c? Let's go ahead and take a look. So we got u equals c and u equals 1 over c. Let's go ahead and back substitute both sides at the same time. What is u? What is c? Right? u is, u is e to the power i z. Okay? I'm sorry. I should pause here. u is e to the power i z and you'll see uh, C in a little bit, okay? C, C. Okay. E to the I, Z is U. So let's go ahead and replace this with I, E to the I, Z and E to the I, Z. And then C is, what is C? Do you remember? I forgot. 
C is e over e to the i or e to the power 1 minus i. I guess you could just call this C. So e to the power 1 minus i, e to the power 1 minus i. And of course, this is going to be e to the power negative 1 plus i, which is the reciprocal. Make sense? Now take a look at this, and you can easily find z from here. How? Well, we're going to get iz equals 1 minus i. Divide both sides by i. And you're going to get z equals this, but multiply by um, negative i, or I guess you could just multiply by the conjugate, negative i, yes, that's right. And this will be negative i plus i squared, which is minus 1, divided by negative i squared, which is 1. So one of them is going to be negative 1 minus i. And of course, the other one is supposed to be 1 minus i. Okay? So in other words, here's, here's what's happening. What's happening is that we are getting, of course, the other solution is just going to be the opposite of this, so I can kind of write those like that. Okay? So, basically what happens is when you get an equation like this, let's go back to the beginning, uh, you're going to get something like this. If e to the iz plus its reciprocal equals this, then of course these two are going to be equal and those two are going to be equal, which gives us the exact same results. Okay? Now let's go ahead and take a look at Wolfram Alpha and see what we get from there. Alternate forms, wow, this is great, right? Absolutely. So whenever you saw e to the power 1 minus i plus e to the negative 1 plus i over 2, that could be written as cosine of 1 plus i, and which happens to be cosine of z. So can I safely say that z can be 1 plus i? Absolutely, you can, but there's more to it. And unfortunately, Wolfram Alpha is not very successful at showing the solutions. It just shows them as cosine inverse of this expression plus 2 pi n. Because what we're supposed to do is we have to add multiples of 2 pi because uh, there's an increment. There are infinitely many solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.